This is my new one, Renee. <laughs> <laughs> I still like this one best. <laughs> Woohoo! Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Kitchen Audit. <laughs> I think we're finally mastering this, Renee. <laughs> I don't even have to do anything, I'm just like, go, go. I know, well, I need to bring it. I need to bring the call a little bit better. I'll do better. I'll work on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we have plenty of time to try every Thursday. Mm -hmm. uh, for those of you who are um, regulars to Kitchen Party, you know where you can find us every Thursday, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. We bring the coolest people in food, cookbook authors, bloggers, uh, people who are building companies. We bring them to talk to you directly. So there's no middleman. You basically, you have a question, you want to know about it, you get to ask. Today's episode um, is really cool. It's about our dogs. And now, um, <laughs> Renee and I are huge dog fans. I'm Babette Pepe, the founder of Bakespace.com and one of the co-hosts of Kitchen Party. Renee, do you want to introduce yourself as well? Sure, absolutely. I'm Renee Lynch. I'm a writer and editor at the LA Times. I work across a number of uh, feature sections, including food and health. Excellent. So uh, when I say the word dog, and I said we're doing a doggy show, what did you think? Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I have I have two of my dogs behind me that are eventually going to wake up when they see somebody like walking by. So you will hear them. This will be the first show that they can bark that I won't have to like mute my mic. I'll be like, that's it. They're in the house. Um, our our guest today, which I'm really excited about now. I it's Christy Vaughn, who is the um, host of a show on Pet Life Radio called The Doggy Dish, and also the owner of um, Positively Wholesome, which I love that, the, like a paw, like a dog hey, paw. Hey, Babette, you cut out a little bit for me. I Renee, I think you just froze. Oh, and Babette, you cut out for me a little bit, oh. so maybe would you mind just redoing her intro so everybody knows where they can find her? Sure. Uh, Melody, did you, were you able to, Christy, were you able to hear me? Yes, I can hear you just now. Oh, okay, so then maybe it was just me. Apologies. Mm. I had to double check. You are not <laughs> a reliable source, Renee. <laughs> Until you get the woo -hoo. Right. Uh, <laughs> Well, our guest is so good, she should get two introductions. How about that? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, for Renee, <laughs> for all the people out there except Renee, uh, uh, Christy Vaughn is the owner of Positively Wholesome, which is a pet, which is a dog treat company. So we'll talk about a little bit about how she built that company, and then also she's the the host of a, a show on PetLifeRadio.com called The Doggy Dish. So I'm really excited. Now I don't even remember how we found you originally. Do you remember what our original conversation was? I think so. I think uh, you found me through the newsletter, the Pet Life Radio newsletter, and you contacted my producer. Hey, and that he is put me exactly in contact with you. So. That is exactly it. No, no. Oh, I, yeah, it's funny because sometimes when I get newsletters, I'm always like, ooh, this person would be interesting. Or Renee gets a pitch, a really cool mm -hmm. pitch, and she'll send it off and she'll be like, oh, you know, we're doing something at the paper. Or we're not doing something. Do you think this would be cool for Kitchen Party? So we're always on the lookout for really cool people. Um, Christy, do you want to introduce yourself, just you know, briefly sure. tell us a little bit about your background? Absolutely. I'm Christy Vaughn, and like Babette said, I am the owner of Positively Wholesome, and you're right, you have to say it like Positively Wholesome, <laughs> <laughs> because that way you know how to spell it. Um, I'm also the host of The Doggy Dish on Pet Life Radio, and it's a podcast about everything having to do with healthy cooking for your dogs. So I also have... My little assistant here. This is Ruger. I have to introduce him. He's a little sleepy boy. He's been sleeping in my lap. He has his bow tie, his party bow tie on, if you can see that, and his little t-shirt. <laughs> so he's, he's ready to uh, kitchen party. <laughs> and he'll probably go back to sleep now. <laughs> you said his name is, is Ruger? Ruger, yes. <laughs> Ruger, I like that. What is? Where does that name come from? Um, It's, it's just a... a a name we came up with. <laughs> I like it. I we came like up it. with it uh, when we've had him a couple of years now. He's two years old, and uh, he's just—he's our, our little—he's uh, our little chubby guy. So 
He's wearing oh. his muscle shirt today because he thinks he looks muscular in it. <laughs> is he your only dog? No, we actually have we have a rescue, Sadie, and she is in the bedroom right now because she gets a little crazy. So uh, she might come out and make an appearance later. But she's a big 55-pound uh, boxer pit mix. So she is like a bull in a china shop. And uh, so she's... She's in the bedroom right now. <laughs> she might come out later. You know, we should have had a webcam on her in the room <laughs> during the show. To see, like, yeah. I can just see her, like, running into the... <laughs> oh, yeah. She's, like, raring to go, too. She has a lot of energy, so... You know, speaking since it is a kitchen party, I just have to ask you guys what you're drinking. Uh, okay. Red I'm wine? so boring. Water. <laughs> Babette, I don't know what's happened to me. I'm just, I'm like, my drinking habits are going downhill. I need a reboot. <laughs> okay. I'm actually trying something new. It's called V-Ling or whatever. Oh, it's, that looks interesting. This, this is a hydration mixer. I saw this at the grocery store yesterday. Here, here is it mixed. But it's a drink that basically, if you drink it with a cocktail, it will hydrate you at the same time. So I figure wow. I can reverse the signs of aging <laughs> from kitchen oh, party. That is brilliant. <laughs> I'm gonna try. I mean, it's fine. Marketing it probably doesn't work, but we'll, we'll see. I don't know. I'll try. It was it was interesting. I was like, that caught my eye. I need some hydration. I need a lot today. Um, How does it taste? It, uh, you know what? Kind of like a Red Bull, oh. which which makes me a little nervous because then I think, is this hydration camouflaged as supercharged? You're not gonna sleep for the next 48 hours. You're a sucker person. I don't know. <laughs> we shall we shall see for sure. But it's okay. I mean, it's would I want to drink a whole bunch of them? Probably not. I mean, I, I think one. That's probably why you don't get dehydrated because you only drink one. Ah, uh -huh, there you go. You cracked the code. <laughs> I cracked the code. I cracked the code. So, okay, so let's let's first talk about because I know the folks who are watching at home. I wanted to give a little bit of time for people to to sign on and see our link and come and check out the show. Um, we're talking about. Food. There are so many recalls on pet food, pet treats. Like every time I go to the pet store and I look for the treats, I'm always like, I can't get the ones from China, and I can't get the you know ones that aren't digestible, and I can't do this, and I can't do this, and I can't do that. And I'm just like, what can my dogs eat? So I thought this would be a great topic because um, food is important to us in general. But because we love our animals so much, it seems like we are willing to spend God's amount of money just to feed them and make them happy and give them treats and stuff. So I guess maybe we should start with like what was your inspiration for starting the company? Was Maybe it's based off of like some of our fears of wanting to actually feed our pets healthy. Absolutely, and uh, you said it right. Uh, there's just so many products out there that um, have unknown ingredients in them, and I think what really inspired me was uh, my goal to really take a look, a very close look at what I was eating for myself and reading uh, labels. I started really paying attention to labels, and I started um, dabbling in the paleo diet, and I realized very quickly how much of an impact it had on me and my family, and so I, I thought, you know what, well, why can't I do that for my dogs? You know, not necessarily the paleo diet, but something with whole foods, uh, no preservatives, basically staying away from packaged foods. Um, so that was really my inspiration. And I just did some research and started making my own dog treats for my dogs and then started giving them out to other dogs because unfortunately my dogs are not the best uh, judges of uh, taste <laughs> because they'll eat anything so I thought you know what I'm gonna hand these out to friends and see if their dogs like them and when they all loved them and I got great feedback um, I started hearing you know you should start a business and I thought you know maybe I should um, I'd love to share this with with the world so that's how it got started um, and it's been really great ever since and I definitely test everything with my dogs but then of course I always test it with picky dogs as well because again they will eat anything <laughs> and so I'm always like is this really good or is it just food <laughs> I have one dog I don't know if Renee if you have the same problem oh you don't have any cats Renee right no I have three cats and two dogs, and they're all rescues. I, I just like find animals, and I'm like, come live with me. <laughs> um, I have one dog who wants to eat cats, I mean, cat poo, and I'm like, what is this? And then I saw an episode of the Dog Whisperer, and they're like, give them bananas, and it will be the same consistency, which worked for like two days, and then they stopped. They were like, I don't want your bananas. Don't give me any bananas. I want the poop. 
So. <laughs> Is that like, well, if you can find something that they like even better than the cat poop, then uh, I think we have a winner. And bananas are good, and also um, sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes are kind of that like mushy consistency too, and you can do a lot with sweet potatoes. Uh, Eric, uh, my uh, better half's uh, sister gets sweet potato. Um, they're like almost like dried sweet potato mm -hmm. fries. Yes. And my dogs just don't eat that for some reason. I don't know what it is. It's like they're too healthy. They're just too, you know. Her dogs love her. her also, her dogs do the um, uh, the raw diet too. What do you think about um, that kind of trend in like? Well, I think I've heard I've heard both sides of it, and uh, I've done a lot of research into the raw diet, and I think. I've heard a lot of success stories, but I've also heard of a lot of breeds not doing really well on it. So my rule of thumb is raw veggies and some fruits, and we can talk about later what, what is safe and what isn't, um, but uh, those are okay. I typically stay away from raw meats just because you never know. It could contain bacteria, and then you're putting bacteria in, in your pet. So I that's kind of my rule of thumb is staying away from raw meats, um, but raw veggies I think are great. It can be a great addition to the, your dog's kibble. So if you feed them some dry kibble, you can put some raw veggies on top of it. You can even put cooked veggies on top of it, and that's a really great way to incorporate those healthy foods without, you know, completely changing it up. So. I know there's there's both sides uh, to the raw diet, and I've heard a lot of uh, great things about it, but then also uh, there's just some specific breeds that don't do too well on it, so I just try and stay away from that. Are you concerned about, um, from from in terms of bacteria, are you concerned about kind of the mass-produced, um, I, I guess, meat products? Mm -hmm. or Because we, when you think about animals in the wild, you know, you know, m millions of years ago, they would eat raw meat, right? So right. why would that necessarily be a problem, do you think, for animals? I think because our animals, our dogs are so domesticated now that um, as they've evolved, um, just like us, they're developing allergies now. And we're seeing a lot of um, gluten allergies. We're seeing a lot of um, peanut allergies. We're even seeing chicken allergies. So that makes me a little bit nervous when it comes to meat sometimes. I mean, obviously dogs um, need meat. They, um, you know, they're omnivores. They need those meats. They need those veggies. But I think as they've evolved and we've domesticated them, they're, they're quite a bit different than in the wild. And so I think they're just not, some of them are not able to break down the protein like, um, like their ancestors were able to. So that's why it just makes me a little bit nervous because I've actually heard quite a bit um, recently that dogs are, some dogs are allergic to chicken which is just kind of crazy to me. But um, so we're starting to see a lot of the same sensitivities and allergies um, as in humans. And so it's kind of mimicking uh, the, the problems that we're seeing. And I think a lot of that can be controlled with diet. Do you think that's because humans are feeding their dogs scraps? I'm really not sure. I mean, that, that, could, be, that could be part of it. Um, I mean, you know, we, we always say, you know, stay away from table food, you know, it, it, it's bad manners, you don't want your dog begging, and you just want to eat in peace, and I think... Um, oh, wait, that's we, the reason why? I thought it was just because <laughs> the food's bad. <laughs> well, and that's the thing is, you know, obviously if you're eating, you know, a piece of chocolate pie, you wouldn't want to give that to your dog, but <laughs> there, are, there are so many foods that we do eat that dogs can't eat, and it's it's... You know, it's exciting because we've always been told, don't give your dog scraps. But if it's the right kind of scraps, then it's fine. You know, if it's fresh, um, fresh, you know, cooked meats and veggies um, and some fruits, then why not? You know, you might just want to maybe feed it to them in their bowl. But, you know, our dogs are spoiled, so they, they eat wherever. <laughs> Renee, what about you? What, is your, what does Rambo eat? Well, um, I, I was so intrigued by today's show because we, uh, our dog has a number of allergies, skin allergies, and is on a special diet. I cook his food for him, and he's, we call him our paleo pup because he <laughs> follows a paleo, a very strict uh, paleo diet, and I have to check whenever I buy him treats, I have to make sure that, I mean, there's basically nothing in that treat that I couldn't eat um, in terms of... Uh, uh, just making sure it's basically vegetables and uh, and meat, no grains. He, we actually think he might be allergic to chicken. We've had a few issues with him when he's had chicken, so we don't feed him chicken. But he has a super strict diet, and I have to tell you, I would not. I, I, our doctors didn't believe uh, when we suggested that maybe his problems were dietary. Our vets were like, "Well, that's probably not it." And we, the night and day 
uh, change that we've seen in him since we've changed his diet. I mean, I will never ever go back to cook to just like regular food for him again. I will always do this kind of food for him. It's just been, it's been, it feels to me like it's been a miracle. And it's all because, I guess it's not a miracle, right, because it's all because of the food, but it's just a night and day experience. You cannot convince me otherwise. Renee, what is the, what was the um, chicken, uh, like how did you find, how did you, what was the, the symptoms? Was well, the I have to tell you, because this dog has been so problematic for so many years, um, I can tell just how he reacts, whether, where, like I can see the way he might be scratching a little more or just fidgeting a little more. I mean, that's how tuned in I am to this dog. Um, and so we, I would just start to notice if I change anything in his diet, I would keep an eye on him for a few days to see if there was any kind of reaction whatsoever. And I feel like I see him kind of chew himself a little more and scratch his skin a little more when he has chicken. Now, I've wondered if we went down the road of doing like really pastured chicken and free range and not kind of mass produced like Tyson chicken, whether that would be a difference, but I'm not even going to test it out with him. I mean, he eats meat, he eats, uh, uh, I'm sorry, he eats beef and pork, and that's great. And I'm so I'm not going to. I'm not gonna, and duck, so I'm not going to jinx it. I'm just sticking with that. <laughs> oh, it's so fancy. <laughs> I feel so bad. My dogs eat, um, I, I, because they're so small, they're like nine pounds each, my dogs eat like the small kibble from um, Natural Balance. And I, try, I tried to do the raw diet once, and that was terrible. He did not, he did not work well, uh, LB did not work well with that. And then, um, a neighbor of mine, when I was like, oh, his stomach's so crazy, I gotta take him to the vet. $1,200 later, we call him the $1,200 dog, <laughs> because there is, he's like $1,200 a year in extra rent, and $1,200 <laughs> per vet visit. And I'm like, this guy, at least he's consistent. And so I was like, ah, oh, our dog has this problem, this is what's going on, or whatever. And she said, oh, I know how to cure that. And I'm like, what? And she said, Pedialyte. She said, when your dog's stomach gets upset, give them a little bit of Pedialyte, and then chicken and rice. Boil the ri boil the chicken and the rice and cool them down, and then give it to him. And I tried it the next time he like went crazy. And Pedialyte, I think I felt like it saved my life because I would have taken that dog. I mean, the dog was so bad that by the, by the time we went to the vet, I, we were driving on Highland. I don't know if Renee, if you know this intersection, but it's like Highland and Fountain, and they do like this oh, yeah. curve, and you can't stop. And so oh, yeah. my dog decides he's going to throw up and go to the bathroom in the car at the same time. And I'm like, no! <laughs> so I, like, pull over. And luckily he had done it on the newspaper that I just pulled the newspaper out and left it on the side of the road. And I was like, it's my gift to God. You know, like, my, <laughs> like, 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 please somebody take this from me because this was a nightmare. <laughs> like, I can't take it anymore. Um, so that, that's been kind of, I've been going back and forth. And then uh, Eric's um, sister, she went on the raw diet for her two dogs, and she said it was it changed their life. But she's really meticulous with making sure it comes out of the freezer at a certain time and making sure that the bowls that she uses are, she has a, a dishwasher that has, like, extra settings and stuff like that. And I think if you have those kinds of um, things in place, um, what, uh, you know, people who are... Um, what do, you, what do you suggest to people who are just going into the, like, they just get a new dog, and they go into the pet store, and they're like, what, there's, like, so many different brands. Yes, what do you that, say, where should they start? That can be extremely overwhelming. Um, there's just so many things to choose from. And if you go into any just normal pet store, you're going to be faced with dog food and treats that um, have ingredients in them that you can't pronounce. And that was always um, my my worry was that I'm putting chemicals and dyes and preservatives into my dogs and I don't even know how to pronounce this ingredient and I don't know well, what is it doing in there so that was um, that was something that was really um, that was really disappointing to me was to see so many treats on the shelves that um, had these ingredients that could possibly harm my dogs so I think um, you know looking for something that is you know claims to be all natural that's kind of your first um, that's that's what you should first look for but then also look at the labels like look at the ingredients and if it's something that if there's like you know red 40 I mean you know they're putting that in there for for coloring and that's probably something that you don't want in your dog and so I would definitely uh, look at your labels do your research and make sure that it's all um, 
you know, whole foods, like hum human grade foods. That's, you know, it should be something that you can eat without having any problems. Um, and so everything that I make um, with my company, I've actually had, I've tried it myself and I've had humans try it and they love it. Um, of course, there's no sugar in it and so it doesn't taste like, you know, chocolate chip cookie or anything, but it's, it's not bad and it's, um, it's all natural and it's stuff that you can eat and, and enjoy as well. Um, and so I would definitely look for um, all natural claims, making sure that it's, um, you know, there's no preservatives in it. Um, if they are preservatives, that they're natural preservatives. Um, and then also, you know, just taking little baby steps to incorporating um, some veggies into your dog's diet. So if you want to, you know, try them with a, you know, a puppy, if you have a puppy, try them with the puppy kibble. But then also get them used to different foods, you know, try to develop that sophisticated palate. So then as they grow and they get older, they will enjoy different foods and different textures. So you might want to cut up some green beans and put those on top or cut up some carrots and put those on top. Um, you know, for, for puppies and older dogs, you might want to have them cooked just because they're, you know, they might have some trouble chewing them. But, um, you know, something like a, a raw carrot, you know, adding that to the top of your dog's food is, is great. So I think just taking baby steps for you so it's not overwhelming and also to introduce it in baby steps to your dog so they're not like, what the heck is this? And you're trying all these different things all at once. So I think just taking it one step at a time. Um, but really, you know, get to know what's on the on the label. I mean, if you need to, after the show, run in to your kitchen, you know, open up where you keep your dog food and look at the labels, and you'll be really surprised. It's just, you know, it's like with human food. You start checking labels and looking at the different contents, it's really eye-opening. And so I just encourage you to do your research, do your homework, and really be informed. Um, as you are the consumer, you're, you're out there, you're spending money on your pets, and you want to keep them healthy. I would I would really second that, Christy. Um, as as I mentioned, we have to be very careful with our dog's diet, and so we examine the labels of everything. And I'm shocked at how what claims to be kind of a natural, wholesome treat. You look at the ingredient list, and you're like, "What is all that stuff?" Um, and it's just the list just goes on and on. And I think I can't pronounce any of this stuff. And we just I mean, we just simply don't buy it. We I mentioned that he has a a duck jerky that we give him, and Duck is the only ingredient on the label. That's it. It's mm -hmm. just a one ingredient label, and so we can feel confident with that. But there's just a ton of stuff and preservatives that gets packed into that food so that it adds to the shelf life, and, I mean, right. you're feeding that to your pet. Right, absolutely, and I, I like how you said just one ingredient. Um, we make dehydrated treats, um, and we have sweet potatoes and apples, and it says on the package, sweet potato. That's the ingredient. Apple. That's the only ingredient. We don't add anything to it. Um, we don't add any seasonings. Um, watch out for jerkies, especially um, if your jerky is coming from anywhere besides the U.S., I would not give that to your dog. Um, I, I'm really a big believer in getting all of my ingredients from the U.S., knowing where they come from, know the source of the ingredients as well. So if, you, if you're if you shopping around for all-natural um, dog food, just make sure you ask questions. You know, don't feel bad about asking questions from wherever you buy it. Um, if they don't know the answer, then, you know, maybe they should find that out or maybe you can do some research and find it out. But yeah, the, um, the fewer the ingredients, the better because all that added stuff, you know, if they're adding sugar, salt, those are preservatives. Those are bad for your dog. I mean, it's bad for us too. You know, we, I don't know about you guys, but I, I always check sodium. Um, so sodium content, sugar content, anything like think that. Sodium. Oh my God. I didn't even think. I mean, I think about sodium for myself all the time because right. I, I don't want to wake up and look like my mother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I know I had salt today. My eyes are all swollen. Um, <laughs> For my dog, I didn't even think about. You know, I'm always grossed out when I go to like the pet store, and I'm like, "What are these long, chewy things that my dog can eat?" And they're like, "Oh, those are pizzles." And I'm like, "What's a pizzle?" And they're like, "You don't want to know." I'm thinking, "How can there be so many animals out there that are missing parts that are just <laughs> chewable?" I mean, it's yeah. so um, I don't know. I just, it's really, I don't know. But my dogs love those things, and like the ears. I mean, I've never given the ears thing. Yeah. But as a vegetarian, I have a real uh, dilemma where I've seen, like, the vegetarian bags of food, and I think, ah, oh, should I, like, put my dog through that? Is it really, it's not his choice, kind of, or not their choice, but uh, are the, is that, I mean, vegetarian, is it still packed? Like, even though it says vegetarian on the package, is it still packed with, like, 
preservatives and crazy stuff and things I should probably know. It, it really depends on what you're looking at. It depends on where it's coming from. Um, again, just read the labels. And if it's a true vegetarian uh, blend, it's, it's just going to have veggies in it. And they're going to be prepared, I don't know, maybe dried. Um, so just you know, really take a look at those labels, examine them, and just make sure that it's what it's claiming to do and what it's claiming to be is really what it is. Because a lot of times people don't take the time to turn the package over. They'll just see all natural on the front. And I mean, that's a, that's a good indicator, but you still need to turn it over and, and read the labels too. It's just like, to make sure it's like all natural. It's in there. Right. It's like, like Renee didn't hear. <laughs> all natural and you think, oh, okay, that's good. But like, what does that really mean? All natural, like, right. you know, it's a It can mean different things to different people. Exactly, exactly. Oh, Rambo, come over here. Oh, he's coming over. Come on, turn the camera towards you a little say bit. Hi. Say hello. Come on, come on, say hello. Oh, no. hey, Rambo. <laughs> oh, there he is. Hey, Rambo. We're talking about you. Oh, kisses. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so old man. I'm going to have to get my dogs. <laughs> They're sleeping. Did you say, oh, man. Hey, do you, Renee, um, for those of you who are watching, if you want to chime into the conversation, if you have specific questions, which I have, a, I do have a cat question that I have to get to eventually <laughs> before the show is over, um, use the hashtag on Twitter, Kitchen Party, all one word. I also want to give a shout-out to the folks who tuned in on, um, on Google Plus and started posting their dog pictures. Andrew Wilder from EatingRules.com, he posted a picture of his dog, Molly, who I think is a rescue dog as well, but oh, a horrible a picture. And then we have K. Dean Russell, uh, Stephen Swimmer. Let me see. It says it says in six others. Let me see. If, oh, Melody Pepeye. Hello, that's my mother. Um, Savannah W. Lucia Yan. Uh, Kaylin Lunt. Uh, Shop Baker's Nook. Who Shop Baker comes all the time. And then uh, Kelly Estep. I think it's Estep. Hopefully, I said your name. Right, uh, Kathleen Flynn also posted an adorable picture of this, like this dog that's just—it's almost like I, I've had a long day. I just want to relax. <laughs> um, it's absolutely adorable. So, if you want to, um, we're giving away a like a sort of a care package of some of uh, a positively wholesome care package. Uh, we're giving that away uh, at the end of the hour. So, hopefully, if, uh, if the, the way to win that is to post a picture either on Twitter using Kitchen Party hashtag, on Instagram using Kitchen Party hashtag, on our, on Facebook using Kitchen Party hashtag. Do I have to do I have to repeat myself? <laughs> you guys know the drill. Kitchen Party is the hashtag, and also on our Google Plus page. Um, you know, I have a couple of questions. Uh, let me you know, just what, uh, let me just jump oh, in for a ahead. second and say over on Twitter, uh, the Fair Trade is joining us, and also Eat the Ball. So thanks for for tuning in, folks. We appreciate it. Glad you're oh, here. I think you're. I think you're Wi-Fi. Oh, can you hear me? Wait, roll back a second. Who was? What was the first name? Did you hear me? Uh, the uh, eat yeah, the ball yeah. and uh, fair trade. Oh no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Did it go out again? <laughs> you know, it's really funny. Can your you video. Me? I think I may be the only one saying this, but your voice. And your video are not synced for a second. Uh, yes, but your mouth doesn't move. You know, but bet I'm gonna drop out and I'm gonna drop out and come right back in, okay? Christy, am I the only one who sees that? No, I see it too. Okay, good. She's gonna she's <laughs> gonna come back. This happens sometimes with Google Plus. Um, for those of you who are um, new to the platform, sometimes Google Plus just decides it's not gonna work, or <laughs> we have to do something. And just refreshing the browser. It's like does it does miracles. Now, um, what's the easiest way to incorporate healthy foods into a dog's diet? Well, like I said earlier, a little bit about like yeah, you mentioned a little bit about the fruit and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but how do you know like because I was thinking today I had blueberries and I mm -hmm. thought oh I think dogs and instead of googling it and being like can dogs eat blueberries I was yeah. like I think they can or yes. carrots. Um, yes. What are some of the things that we normally eat that you can just feel free to give your dog? Well, um, you mentioned blueberries. Blueberries are awesome. And actually, our two dogs expect their blueberries every morning. So they're pretty much spoiled. Um, so they know when Daddy is going into the freezer to get blueberries out to make his shake, and they go running into the kitchen and sit there and drool until they each get a blueberry. So uh, blueberries are great. So fresh or frozen, they love them. Um, strawberries are great. 
Um, raspberries are great. Um, let's see. You can make you know, your dog. I think about the frozen stuff because we have frozen fruit all the time. I mm -hmm. try to give them the fresh stuff, but they seem like they can't bite into the, the stuff that's fresh sometimes because the blueberries are so, they just, they pop or they just mm -hmm. can't get a good grip on them. The, the frozen stuff, does that make it easier for them to actually chew? Um, I don't. I don't know if it makes it easier, but it's you know our dogs like um, they like cold stuff. They actually like ice, which is strange. But uh, whenever we get ice out of the freezer, they come running, um, and so they do like that that frosty um, that frosty taste, I guess. And so they they like frozen fruit, but fresh. I mean, if you can, I always say if you can feed your dogs fresh food, that's the way to go. Um, you never want to do anything with canned uh, vegetables. Um, always you know, fresh and then frozen if you have to. Um, it's just kind of easier to keep fruit, especially um, on hand if it's frozen. You don't have to worry about it spoiling. Um, but as far as vegetables go, uh, carrots are awesome. You can do a lot with carrots. Um, you can shred them and put them into some type of cake if you want. Um, and I actually talk about this on my latest episode of The Doggy Dish. So it'll be posted next week. And I give tons of recipes um, in the 30 minutes of the show. And I talk a little bit about incorporating carrots. So you can do carrots raw, you can do them cooked, you can shred them and include them in a cake or a little uh, cupcake for them. Um, broccoli, oddly enough, dogs love broccoli. Um, I actually haven't found a dog who does not like it and I really didn't believe that mine would. Uh, but you can do fresh broccoli, you can dry uh, broccoli in a dehydrator and make them into little crispy chips. They love those for some reason. I warn you though, it will smell up your house. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you know you're cooking broccoli, um, it's it's pretty strong. So just be warned um, that it will smell pretty bad. But you can cook it and put it on top of their their kibble. Uh, you can make a nice little vegetable medley and do carrots and broccoli. Um, and so those are just some of the things that you can have on hand that are easy for them to snack on. Um, if you're doing a, if you're doing some type of training with your dogs, you can break up um, any of those. Um, vegetables we talked about, break them up into little pieces and give those as training treats. And so that way you don't have to worry about giving them something over and over again that has um, bad ingredients in them or too much fat. So if your dog's on a low-fat diet, then that's really the way to go is to, to really work with those fresh fruits and veggies. You know, blueberries, what a great way to just, you know, pop those as you're training your dog. So... Those are some easy ways. You know, you can get really fancy in the kitchen and make, um, you know, make something that is, um, you know, like a birthday cake, which I talk about in my latest uh, episode of the Doggy Dish. Um, but really, just starting out with these very fresh ingredients that you can add to what you already give your dog, that's a really nice way to ease into it and also get them used to those tastes. And you'll notice that they'll start begging for more because they it's different first of all it's something different it's a different texture it's a different smell it's a different taste um, but but also they they really start to enjoy it and if you if you mix it up you know put a little peanut butter on it that's a great way to get your dog to try something you know I don't know a dog who doesn't love peanut butter um, and then another one I just made is it's a nice uh, hot weather uh, treat is uh, slicing up a banana just take a banana and slice it up and then put a little bit of peanut butter on it, stick it in the freezer for about an hour, and it's it's just a nice treat for a hot summer day. Um, you can get really fancy like I did and put it into put the peanut butter into a piping bag and then make little like paw prints or like a smiley face or little designs. Just makes it fun. Of course your dog doesn't know the difference, but yeah. <laughs> that's a cool well, idea. They'll eat it either way. They don't really care what it looks like. I'm thinking they just know like, what has peanut butter on it. I think I'd like that, so it'll be like one for Rambo, one for me. <laughs> exactly. You can share it with your dogs. How much fun is that? And that's really, that that is what we focus on at Positively Wholesome is being able to share those little snacks and treats with your dogs. You know, the apple chips, I always, when I make them and I'm bagging them, I always like set aside a few for myself and for my dogs because they're just delicious. I mean, they're crispy chips. They're sweet, and so they have that crunchy. If you're, you know, you're, you're um, craving something crunchy and sweet, it's the perfect snack, and it's just apple. There's nothing in it. Um, you could add a little bit of cinnamon if you want. Uh, cinnamon makes everything better, and it's actually really good for dogs as well. It, um, there's something in cinnamon that will help with their circulation. So if you have a dog with arthritis, 
cinnamon is a great addition. So, you know, cook up a sweet potato and put a little bit of cinnamon on it, or cook up, um, uh, dehydrate an apple, or just take a, an, an apple slice that you uh, slice up. You can wedge it and sprinkle a little cinnamon on it. So, that's a yummy treat for you, too. That's a cool idea. I've, I've never even thought about um, some of that stuff. Because I always thought, like, cinnamon, like, oh, if, if you have cinnamon by itself, like, you know, like the like college kids were like, you're oh, like, the cinnamon oh, challenge? Try to, yeah, trying to eat a bunch of cinnamon. I'm always like, I think that's poisonous. <laughs> try to stay away from it as much as I can. But I'm like, just that's... a little bit. Obviously, you wouldn't want to give your dog you know, a teaspoon of cinnamon, <laughs> but just like a little sprinkle of it, you know, it, it they, they love it, and it's it's good for them. <laughs> now, um, with your with your company, because how long have you been in business, by the way? Um, about a year now, um, but it's really started to... Thank you. It's been um, it's been in the works for a while now, but it's really started to take off uh, the last few months. Uh, we're actually featured in Pet Box in May, uh, starting in May, and so you'll see Sadie's sweet potato chips in Pet Box. So if we have any Pet Box subscribers out there, uh, you may be surprised if you have one of the surprise boxes, or you can go and uh, go to the Pet Box website and actually uh, check off which ones you want. So you'll see Sadie's sweet potato chips on there, and they're really healthy. It's just, again, just sweet potato. There's nothing added to it, and they're crunchy, and it's uh, easy to break them up if you have a smaller dog, so you don't have to give them the whole chip. So, so it's yeah. potato? Potato. <laughs> you, have to say, you have to say it with an accent. You say I think potato I'm just chip. Say potato like that for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> just, I, for some reason, I have to love it. I do want to give a shout out to Carol um, Houseworth, who also just chimed in on Google Plus as well. Welcome, Carol. Um, she's probably confused because she's like, "What?" <laughs> my name. That's crazy. Um, you know, with the with the business, how hard was that to start your business? Because as an entrepreneur, I'm always interested in that kind of, you know, not only do you have to figure out your labeling and your what, how to do things the right way and making sure that it's clean and packaging and then selling it. And, ah, can you tell, yes. can you kind of like briefly go over some of that journey? Sure, sure. It's, it's definitely been a journey. It's, um, there's been a lot of um, blood, sweat, and tears shed, <laughs> but it's all, it's all worth it. Um, but yeah, the, you're, you're absolutely right. It is uh, definitely, um, there's a lot more that goes into it than people think. Um, going from a small, you know, cottage business into the real world of business is a daunting task. It really is. And, you know, I've learned a lot. Uh, there's been some growing pains, but it's all good stuff. It's all stuff that has made the business even stronger and better. And every single day, it seems like we have new opportunities that are presenting themselves. So um, it's just, you know, it, it was it was slow getting started, doing my research, um, knowing exactly what goes into uh, the labeling, like you said, that is that is a whole big thing that you have to do. Um, there's state regulations, which is good. I'm, I'm I was glad to hear about that. That uh, the most states have uh, very strict regulations when it comes to pet foods and feeds, and so you have to adhere to those. Whatever um, state you're selling in, you have to make sure that you're in compliance. And so. I will do that all day long because I want to keep pets safe and so I want to make sure that what I'm doing and what everybody else is doing is the right thing and, and making sure that everything is tested. Um, you have to do guaranteed analysis to make sure that um, your, your levels are right, your fats, your proteins, um, fiber and moisture, those are the big ones and so those are also good things to look for on your labels when you're when you're shopping around just as a side note uh, but all of those things have to be tested so every time um, we do a new recipe it has to go through rigorous testing uh, several rounds of testing to make sure that there's consistency and so that way we know that what we're putting out there is a good product um, and then the label regulations we have to make sure we're in compliance for that um, and then you know all of the financial stuff that goes along with starting a business that's you know I'm not a math person so I have people do that for me because that is not my forte but it's really um, if I had to you know give some advice to people who are starting you know make sure you surround yourself with really good people who can advise you that's the main thing is that you want people on your side if you have no idea what you're doing it's okay you don't have to know um, 
learn on your own, you know, be, um, be really motivated to get out there and do your own research, but also surround yourself with good people who have done this before. And I've had some really great mentors throughout this process who've kind of set me up for success. And so I think that that's one piece of advice that I would like to share is, you know, anyone can do this. It's just you have to have the drive to do it. You have to be willing to push through the hard times. And, um, you know, if it, if it seems like it's, it's too much, um, ask for help. I mean, I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm always willing to ask people for help, and I've had some really great people who have uh, been there for me to lean on. So I think that's, um, that's, that's my advice, and uh, everything is just moving right along, and it seems like every day we have new opportunities, and it's just really exciting, and this has become my passion. So I'm going to keep moving forward and, and uh, see, see what else we can do. So we have some exciting things in the works. Um, Still doing some some new product testing right now. Uh, still getting some things back from the lab, and so we'll be doing some announcements soon for some new products that are coming out. So that's really exciting. Have you been able to turn this into a full time job for yourself? Um, almost, yes. Um, getting there, getting to that point where um, hopefully it will be 100% full time. Um, it's 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 almost there. It's almost to that point. So what started as a little, you know fun project in the kitchen is now to the point where it's um, almost full time for me. So. Wow, so how, how long would you say, because we do have, we have people who, who tune in who may have an idea for making something themselves, so how, how long has this process been going on? Did you say you started about a year ago, but yes. you put a lot of research into it before that? Um, I did. I did with my, you know, just with my own dogs and making sure that I, I knew what I was doing before I started, you know, putting it out there for the public. Um, but I would, you know, I would say um, things, it seems like things moved really quickly for me, which I'm, I'm very thankful for. But also, it's, um, it's really wise to kind of like take a step back and slow down a little bit too, because you obviously don't want a business to grow too fast, because that can be dangerous as well. Um, but I would say, you know, give yourself some time. I would set a goal. Um, to making this a reality, you know, take whatever your dream is and, and making it a reality and making it a full-time gig. Um, give yourself some time. Give yourself like a really long time because then if it happens before then, I mean, that's great. So you've, you've basically uh, made your dream come true and you didn't even take as long as you thought you would. So I would say, you know, give yourself two years. If you think, okay, I have this great idea and I want to start tomorrow. You know, give yourself maybe two years to actually get it um, to the point where you, where you want it, you know, you, you want to do it full time and it can sustain um, on its own. So I would say, you know, set a goal and, you know, whatever it may be, it, it may be a year. Um, if it's something that you've been working on for a while, um, give yourself you know less time if you think that it's um, if it's possible. I had uh, dropped out of the program for just a little bit because I was having some technical difficulties. So maybe this question was asked already. But did you have a background in this? What what uh, uh, are I mean, do you have an MBA or do you have any kind of a business <laughs> background that would have equipped you for this? Um, no, I do have two master's degrees, um, not in business, but um, I've spent pretty much my entire life in school. <laughs> and so I've worked for businesses and I've done a lot on the, the, the business side of education actually um, was kind of my forte, but um, spent the last couple of years um, on the business side of private education. And so I feel like that's really um, helped me get to the point where I can understand like the business stuff, like the business lingo. Um, I still have a lot to learn and that's why it's really important to have mentors and people who you can kind of lean on. Um, but I, my interest in dogs started from a young age. Um, I grew up with a German Shepherd and I grew up with cats and so I've always been really interested in animals and I've always been a huge animal lover. And so I've I've been around animals enough to kind of know what they like, what they don't like, what I should try with them as far as foods go, what isn't safe. Um, and so I just felt like I, I wanted to, to share that and I wanted to explore that a little bit more. Speaking of cats, this is a perfect transition. <laughs> I did that <laughs> I on like, purpose. I was like, I heard cats. Um, we had, <laughs> I got an email. I sent out a newsletter and I was like, hello, people, hello, people. If you have a dog, you have to watch the show. <laughs> and we got an email from Jan, who is a big space member, who was like, what about the cats? And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I have three cats myself, so I'm the last person who would be like, oh, no, we're not going to talk about those cats. So what? 
I mean, do you get that a lot? Do you get people asking you, like, what do I do with my cats? Because my cats are, I have good cats and I have bad cats and I have cats that hide. I can't figure <laughs> them out. Any advice? Yes, cats are very difficult to figure out, and that's why I haven't really dabbled too much in the cat side of things. Um, I, you know, I, I did grow up with cats, and I just know that they're very picky. They're, um, you know, they're just an interesting breed. And so, whereas dogs will most likely eat whatever you put in front of them, or at least that's what mine do, cats tend to kind of have their own minds, and, and they either really, really like things, or they'll turn their nose up at it, or one day they like it, and the next day they don't. And so, they tend to be so picky that um, that's it's definitely a question I get asked a lot, but since they're so picky, I haven't really gone down that road. Um, but I do have some advice if you are looking to make, you know, healthy choices for your cat. Um, you know, cheese, they love cheese. I think most cats love cheese. Um, so if you do like a low-fat cheese, like a low-fat cheddar cheese, you can mix that um, with some different ingredients and make like little cheddar biscuits for them. You can do um, some different cheeses, low-fat cheeses I would recommend. You can do a flour. Um, and we haven't even talked about flour yet. I wanna I want to talk about that too because as we we're talking about grain, grain-free stuff, it's really important. Um, but if you, if you Use your flour of whatever you choose to use. Um, yogurt is another thing you can give cats. Um, and then uh, you can add in some cornmeal into those ingredients, mix them up, and then bake them. And you can have yourself a little a little cat treat. So it's similar to dogs. It's very similar. Um, but they, of course, like different things. They like tuna. Um, some dogs may or may not like that. So you can kind of play with the ingredients. You know, tuna is really good, cheese is good, yogurt's good, um, and just kind of play with some some fresh vegetables and things like that. Mix it all together, bake it, and just see if they like it. You know, and and it doesn't take too long to do. So if they turn their noses up to it, just give it to the dog. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I tried milk with my cats. I'm like, these cats will love milk, and I was like, you need a little extra something something. And I would put milk out, and they would just like sniff it around. They would look at it, and I'm like, "What is wrong with you, cats? This is the quintessential food item on your palate." But none of my cats like milk. It's really strange. I thought that's the thing that they like. So I'm a little nervous the cheese thing. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna try that. Um, I have one cat who won't eat any treats at all. Like, but she demands to be fed, and her cries are. I think my neighbors think I'm like an animal abuser or something like that because she's like, meow. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, thanks. And her name's Fluffy, so it's really awful because I didn't name her. I got her from the pound that way. And I'm, I always look at her and I'm like, you're so lucky I like you or else you'd be out with the coyotes. <laughs> They're ridiculous. Um, you know, how do we know what our dog is going to like? Like, how do we, where do we go? How do we figure it out? Because I, well, I go to the, the, I go to um, I go to Unleashed Petco's Unleashed, and because I get like the five dollar back rebate every time I spend a hundred bucks, and every time I go there, I feel like I spend a hundred bucks. <laughs> and five dollars makes a difference. Um, I also like Rusty's if you're in LA and on Ventura Boulevard. Some of the best stuff. It's a um, he's an independent uh, guy, and he's awesome. He sends out the most amazing newsletters ever, and he's just he he decorates his his um, he does like. Um, Easter in Santa, where he gets all the dogs in the neighborhood to come, and they all like take pictures of the Santa Claus. It's hysterical. So <laughs> Rusty's on Ventura, in in Los Angeles. Um, but when I look at the packages and I say lamb and chicken and this and this, and I think, oh, I want to be adventurous, but then I'm like, ugh, I don't like lamb. <laughs> what? Well, how do I know? What? What? Well, how will I know what they like? Well, a lot of it is just kind of trying it out with them to see. Um, again, I would just start with baby steps. Um, if you can get, I know some, as far as dog food goes, I know some stores will give you like a sample, like they get samples from the, the dog food companies. And I know I've done that in the past with some of the, the food that I buy for my dogs is, is, you know, I don't know if they're gonna like it. I don't know if they're gonna like that flavor. So, you know, if you can get a sample, that's great. Um, but as far as cooking at home for them, I would just try a little at a time. You know, don't don't try all of the veggies all at once because that's going to be a little bit overwhelming. So I would try maybe carrots. Just start with carrots. Um, most dogs like carrots, and so you know, try it out. Buy a bag for yourself. Um, you know, the little baby carrots are great. You can kind of snap those in half for really small dogs like yours, Babette. They would probably love like just a little half of a carrot and just give you know give them a little bit to to munch on. Um, if they don't like it, then okay, whatever. You know, more for you. So. 
then I would just kind of incorporate little little by little. If you know that they like carrots, then you can start using that in other things that you make. So um, again, in my my epi my latest episode that'll be up next week. I talk about tons of recipes uh, that you actually you, you bake, and they have you know limited ingredients in them, just a few things that you have on hand in the fridge, in the pantry, and you can make fun little treats to keep on hand. You can refrigerate them, you can freeze them, and just you know pop a couple out and give them as treats throughout the day. So if you know that they like a certain food, start experimenting with it and uh, you know just incorporating it into different different treats that you make um, but if they don't like it you know just move on to the next thing I can uh, I can second that because that's exactly what we did with uh, with Rambo and we found out he doesn't seem to particularly like squashes but he loves pumpkin um, but he doesn't particularly like zucchini and and I did that same thing I'd be making something for us and then I'd just try a little piece with him he loves peppers um, bell peppers he goes crazy over so I think that's a great suggestion for just sprinkling a little on their food and then seeing how they react to it yep yep and I did want to mention we talked about grain um, you know grain free grain allergies uh, gluten free stuff like that if if you're looking for a good flour to use and you know that your dog is allergic or you suspect they may be allergic you may want to consider trying a grain free flour and there's tons out there if you go to the health food store and even some large grocery stores are now carrying them because it's so popular um, but I would suggest something like a coconut flour or garbanzo bean flour which is, is strange it sounds weird but it's actually made from chickpeas or garbanzo beans and it's just ground into a flour and it, it bakes pretty much just like a like a white or a whole wheat flour and so you may want to incorporate that into the treats that you're making um, because that will uh, help eliminate some of those allergic reactions if you know that your dog is allergic to grain um, but if they're not if you know they eat anything and they're fine they don't have a reaction I suggest whole wheat flour um, but you do have some choices out there so I recommend coconut flour, garbanzo bean flour, um, almond meal um, for your grain-free flours, and that can be a good base for making your, your cakes and your cookies and your, your little um, biscuits and things like that. I wanted to show you guys Savannah. <gasps> hey, Savannah! Hello. <laughs> Say hello. Savannah. Oh, Savannah. Oh. You know, it's so funny. I think Savannah's a little camera shy. Yeah, she's not so fun. Is can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay, good. Um, Rome, not someone who you know, will pass. But her name is Savannah, and for some reason, I've been wanting to call her Sav uh, Savansky, Ro Ro Ramona Savansky, like Roman Polanski. <laughs> that's, like <her> <laughs> that's like her nickname. That's a really weird digression, but it's just it's very funny. She's just. She's, <laughs> I got her at the pound, last day at the pound, she was going to be put down. She was six pounds when I got her, and then she has ballooned to like nine pounds. What do I do? How do I trim her down so she's not like this like little burrito walking down the street? And, you know, she's just so cute. Look at her face. Hello. I say, I say you should let her be a burrito. <laughs> and, <laughs> she has like a little gremlin face when I saw her the first time, and she like when she smiles. Her smile is like all the way back, so she's like, I wish I wish she would do it now, but she's too. Hello. Oh, look at her. <laughs> Actually, I have the really pretty dog, but he's asleep and he won't let me. He won't let me pick him up. I mean, maybe he'll bring him up. I don't know. All right, you know, I have a whole bunch of like do's and don'ts here. Um, eggs. What are your What's your take on eggs? Well, eggs, and, and this is a, a, this actually answers your other question too, or partly answers it. Um, eggs are great to use um, if you're baking. Um, even a hard-boiled egg is a nice little additional protein for your dogs um, as like a little treat or on top of their food. Um, but if you're watching their weight, uh, you may want to consider just using egg whites if you're going to be baking them something. Just try and cut that fat down a little bit. And then also, um, you know, if you see a recipe because they're out there that calls for the entire egg which sounds weird but there's some recipes out there that call for the entire egg including the shell I just recommend not using the shell because there there can be some bacteria that lives in or on the shell and so Wait, you don't the wanna... entire egg plus the shell I've never yes. seen anything I've what is that about 
it's supposed to add extra nutrients to the treat that you're baking, but in my opinion, I think just the inside of the egg is enough. Uh, but yeah, there's there's some some recipes that call for like crushed up eggshells, and so wow. um, if you come across something like that, just um, I would just keep that in mind that there could be some bacteria living in in the eggshell or on the eggshell. And so if you're trying to trim your dog down, just use the egg whites and kind of uh, fill in with uh, fill in the extra liquid with some water. That works out really well if you need something to kind of bind uh, the dough together. Um, but eggs are fine. Eggs are great, great source of protein. Hard-boiled eggs, if you want to slice one up, and even just the egg white and put it on your dog's food, that's a great source of protein for them. What I don't understand is how can they eat peanut butter, but they shouldn't eat nuts? Well, they can have some nuts. Okay. Um, they can certainly have some nuts. Um, some some nuts that you want to stay away from are walnuts. Um, they can be toxic. Um, you can feed them peanuts. Peanuts are fine. Um, you can do almonds. Now, cashews are not horrible, but they're high in fat. They're kind of a fatty nut, and also Brazil nuts. You know the ones that well, the ones that I always avoid in a trail mix. Those big. The big those ones. ones. <laughs> <laughs> the ones that I always like just leave. <laughs> I was like, what are those? <laughs> what are those? Exactly. And, those and are you, really fatty and so are cashews. And so I love cashews, but yeah, I too. don't give them to my dogs because they are really high in fat. And so I, I try and avoid them too because they're they're not the best nut. Um, you know, speaking of peanut butter, I, like it, you know, there's like this new peanut butter that's out that's like for dogs, peanut butter for dogs. What and it's like branded for dogs. And I saw it at a pet store once, and the woman at the pet store was like, oh, no, 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 don't even get that. Just get the non-sugar mm -hmm. one that you get at the grocery store. It's like half the price. Don't worry about that stuff. Um, is that okay? Like, what if I'm going to get peanut butter for my dogs, am I going to go and buy, like, the Jiffy super sugary with nuts no. in it? Okay. What, what, no, what should I get? I yeah, you you should stick with the all natural stuff. Um, you know, again, look at the labels. You know, really be an informed consumer when you go to the peanut butter aisle and you you look at, you know, um, the shelves full of peanut butter and the different kinds and, um, you know, the kind with omega fatty acids in it and the kind with this and that. So it can be a little overwhelming. But I would just stick with like an all natural peanut butter. Um, just make sure that there isn't a lot of you know, extra sugar in it or salt or anything like that. You just want to stay away from that. Um, organic peanut butter is good. You know, if you can, um, if you can afford to do organic, organic vegetables, organic fruits, organic peanut butter, that's great. I mean, it really is for both you and your dog. But if you can't, you know, just try and incorporate as many all-natural foods as you can and really try and stay away from the added sugars and, and things like that. And, and also with applesauce, too. That's another one. If you do applesauce, um, if you bake with it or if you just give it to your dog, um, make sure it doesn't have any of the added sugar in it. Hmm. Renee, I feel like I need to completely change my um, doggy feeding thing. What about, tr like, with treats, I know that you said you can give them blueberries and you can get them vegetables and stuff like that. Are there any, um, I mean, how do people find your product? Is it only available on the web? Is it available in the stores? Where, where can people find those? That seems like, it seems like you've solved sort of the problem of a natural product that is tasty and good. Um, if I try to make it on my own, it's going to be a disaster. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> well you know, if, if, you, if you discover that you either don't have time, uh, which you know, I do give some tips on my radio show for those of us who just don't have enough time. I mean, who really has time to cook for their dogs? I mean, I know Renee does, and that's awesome. <laughs> But I don't know. I don't know if I have the time to actually cook full meals for my dog. So um, if you don't have that time, you just can't carve it out uh, to cook your own meals, let alone your dog's meals. Then um, you know, cooking treats might be a little bit more manageable because they just don't take that long. But if that still is a little bit too much for you, you can always um, find our products on our website, positivelywholesome.com, and you can also find them in Pet Box. So if you're a Pet Box subscriber, then look out for that. Um, and I also want to offer for all of our uh, our viewers today, I want to offer a special, super exclusive code for all of you guys out there. Um, so if you go to the website um, and you type in at checkout the code BAKESPACE20, that will give you 20% off of all the products that are on the site. And so that is good for just you guys who have the super secret code um, that know about it. And so and the ones that get to on the there. end of the video. This is like <laughs> <a> reward. <laughs> the ones that fast forward through, hopefully you don't do that. <laughs> 
that's awesome. I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna check that. I'm out. gonna definitely do it, Christy. I kid you not. You said that, and Rambo was like. What? <laughs> like, treats? Rambo was like, let me at the keyboard. <laughs> I gotta I gotta get my one more dog. Renee, tell us about what, what you do, like your your feeding things. We only have about three more minutes left to the show. How how do you feed your animals? How do you feel how do you feed Rambo every single day? Like what's uh, that process? Well, you know what? We cook um we, we our rice cooker is like our best friend. We do not actually feed him rice, but we use our rice cooker to cook meat in large batches. And we will usually cook six or seven servings at a time. And then I mix that with roasted vegetables. And I just make like a huge tray of roasted vegetables every week. I mean like just a huge, huge tray. And then I stir in, um, I get pumpkin. And I stir in pumpkin. Oh, it sounds like you're... And, uh, he loves it. And then I, I have a supplement. I have a dietary supplement I drop in there. But he goes bananas over it. He jumps and spins and dances when he's getting his food. I tell my husband, you don't do this when I feed you. Look at him. <laughs> he should learn from him. <laughs> exactly. I want to show you guys LB. It's not hard at all. It's not, oh, look at that face. It's not hard at all. It's very easy to do. <laughs> oh, look at that. See, oh. this is what happens when you have a small dog, Renee. You can Babette, him he's so cute. Ruger man. <laughs> he's so cute. Oh, he looks like a little deer. He's the <laughs> sweetest dog ever. He does he's look just, like a little deer. <laughs> he, he was found. He was seven pounds when we got him, and now he's like twelve pounds. It's ridiculous. But he—it's like he grew. Like he, nobody fed him when Aww. they had, had him, and he just grew. And it was—it was the last day. And if someone posted on Facebook, and I was like, "I'll take him," and I'd never had a dog before in my life, so now I'm like an eight-year-old girl, where I'm like. This is my dog. <laughs> it's it's oh. really stupid. It's really he stupid. lucked out. He, did. he lucked out. Now he's living. He's living the high life. Yeah. Oh my God! You're I like Ruger. So he's like him and Ruger. Yeah, he's he's a little sleepy and grumpy right now. I just woke him up. I love how his face doesn't change. He's like. <laughs> he's <just> like <laughs> does he bark? Sometimes, yes. He um. He likes to alert us when there's a squirrel that's invading <laughs> invading his territory outside, or a chipmunk, or a bird. It's pretty much the only time he barks, but he, he has to let us know that there's an intruder. <laughs> you know, Christy, I never I didn't get to ask you. Usually, I ask our guests this in the beginning. Where are you Where are you logging in from? Oh, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. You know, I'm going to be in Atlanta in September. We should oh. we should connect somehow because I'm producing our food blogger conference then. Absolutely. Uh, September 27th. So I would love to. Hopefully that's a good time of year. I heard that it's not too yes. humid. Yes. Okay. Fall is awesome here. And I grew up in Florida, so um, any season other than hot and humid is <laughs> welcome <laughs> to me because I'm just used to the, the one season there. So, yes, we have beautiful springs, although the pollen is kind of annoying, but uh, our, our fall is, is the perfect time to be here. Awesome. Well, you have been a lovely guest. Will Thank you, you so come, much. Will you come back if you have like some news or or something changes and you want to like share it with us? And also, Renee, I before the show started, I had told her about the wine and wine. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> and I think I piqued Chrissy's interest because That's I was awesome. like, we, we drink wine and we wine. <laughs> and I, was like, hmm. I said, <laughs> sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's our next. Uh, that's gonna be our next show, Renee. We're just gonna we're just gonna set a topic, and everyone has to bring wine. Maybe we all t we all bring the same wine too. Maybe that's the. We try a new wine together. Yeah, that would be right. that would be really cool, like a little wine tasting thing. That sounds like a great idea. Love it. All right. Well, um, Renee, anything on your agenda this week that's coming up that people should look out for, or go to the paper and, and check out, or anything from last week that they should follow up on? You know what? We have been so all consumed with the redesign of the paper. We just, uh, or rather, the redesign of the website. I feel like I don't exactly know which end is up, but I will tell you what I'm going to be doing is taking advantage of that discount and getting Rambo some <laughs> treats. <laughs> I'm looking forward to uh, doing a little shopping for him. Me too. Actually, I'm probably going to do that. I'm actually doing that right now. <laughs> that, code, that code again is Bake Space 20, right? Bake Space 20. Just put it in at checkout and it'll apply the discount. Awesome. Awesome. You have been wonderful. We will let you know when the wine and wine show Thank goes. Thank you. We'll have you and back I'd love sure. to come back. Absolutely. <laughs> That'd be great. Well, let us know if there's any news or anything that we can help you with. I will. Um, 
And uh, if there's, you know, uh, if you have any any new recipes or anything that you want to share with us, we would love to be the first to get that preview. Especially our dogs. Our dogs are uh, they're hungry. <laughs> I should actually walk them. Usually I walk them before the show, and I'm like, oh, they're fine, but they're sleeping now. So I figured, don't. It's like a child. Don't mess with them. Right. Not broken. Well, we will see you next week. We have two shows coming up the next two weeks. First of all, I'm going to London on Wednesday, Renee. It'll be very interesting for a week to speak at Food Blogger Connect, which is the like premier food blogger conference in London. Um, they do such an amazing job. They have great speakers. And I'm going to be talking about cookbook publishing, which I'm really excited about. Wow, that's great. So I'll be there all week. And we're doing, I'm doing the Hangout next week. Uh, we have uh, Gabby uh, uh, from uh, What's Gabby Cooking is going to be on as well, uh, talking about some recipes that she's developing. And then we also have Ida Mellencamp, who's going to be the following week, which will be really exciting. So the next week's show, I'm going to be in London getting ready. And hopefully, because the time difference, it's going to be like 1 a.m. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm like, I'm just going to be really quiet in the house because they were in the house. And then the next week, I get back on Wednesday. So when Thursday and comes around, I'll totally be, um, I'll be alert, but I'll be totally. <laughs> Then you're going to need your Red Bull. That's when you're going to need your Red Bull. True. I'll keep these in the refrigerator. Um, so it should be really fun. The next two shows are going to be amazing. Some of my favorite um, food bloggers are going to be on talking about great recipes. Um, and then I'm trying to think after that, who do we have? I have to look through the calendar, but I'll start posting that stuff on, on uh, Twitter and using the hashtag. Um, if you guys have any, you know, if you we're still keeping the um, dog photo contest going, so... Uh, I think what we'll do is we'll post it in the Twitter feed in like the next hour or so of who won that prize. And um, so you have still another hour to post your photo. And Renee, you should post your photo. I know. I, I can't believe I didn't do that already. I got to do that. All right, cool. All and right, also, I just wanted oh. to tell everyone that I, um, I'm on uh, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, so you can find P. Wholesome on all of the social media sites and also um, Doggy Dish Radio. Um, and if you follow Positively Wholesome, I do post some little specials, sometimes free shipping, which everyone loves, and other little discounts. So make sure you follow along. And I also post super cute photos of this guy and also my other <laughs> Dog Sadie. So you can't miss that. <laughs> when does the podcast air? Like, when can they see a new episode? Yeah, um, it's, it really depends. Um, it's every couple of weeks. Um, there isn't like a set date uh, that they come out, but every couple of weeks, if you check back on the site, on the uh, Pet Life Radio site, then you'll see uh, when my producer uploads the, the next one. And I also post it all over my social media. So if you follow me, you'll be the first to know when they're up. And then you can listen and get lots of good recipes and tips and tricks. Awesome. Well, you have been wonderful. So we will see you guys next week. Use the hashtag Kitchen Party throughout the week. Post your comments. Talk about the upcoming shows. Talk about last week's show. And we will see you soon. So, Renee, any final words? No. Thanks very much. This was fun. Awesome, guys. If you need any recipes, go to Bakespace.com, and we will see you next week. Okay. Bye. I don't Bye. I was thinking uh, Melody, our producer, keeps changing things. So I'm like, are we going to get some music <laughs> to put, push us out? But Bet, you could just sing. Why don't you just sing? <laughs> I'm always, I know what she's doing right now. She's like, oh, shoot, because her volume probably was down. So she's like, Thank you <laughs> that's okay. No one watches to the end of the show anyways, Mel. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we will see you later. Right. Bye. Bye. Bye.